Hello everyone and welcome to episode 4 of the EVCraft Business Let's Play series. Uh, you may notice that we're actually broadcasting in a significantly higher quality rate uh, with some help from uh, my staff and a couple friends. Uh, I've been able to significantly improve the look of the video without it uh, taking me three days to be able to upload this thing to YouTube. So, uh, today I haven't done too much so far. I uh, did a little bit more mining to collect some more ores for what we need, and I've chopped down uh, a boatload of trees. So, uh, I have plenty of wood for these next items, so we can actually start moving a little bit faster in these uh, episodes. Now, the first thing that you probably remember from previous episodes is I've got two vanilla chests here, and they're both getting relatively full. Um, a lot of this is simply because, you know, I've picked up odds and ends here and there, and it's, it's getting pretty bad. So the first thing I'm going to do today is show you some of uh, the low-end uh, storage alternatives you have to just the vanilla chests. The first thing we're going to look at is barrels. Barrels is something I was introduced to back in uh, 1.4, and it still uh, stays to be uh, a really nice uh, starting thing. Now the thing with barrels is they can only hold one item per barrel, uh, one type of item that is, uh, but they can hold a large number of that item. Um, you create it with uh, six wood blocks and two iron ingots for the basic model. six blocks and we get a barrel so with the barrel for example you just basically put it down anywhere you want just like you would a chest then you take the item that you want to store in this case we'll say cobblestone and you left click on the barrel or right click on the barrel sorry and uh, that puts the cobblestone in there now obviously it shows you what is in the uh, the barrel as well as the number that are in there now if I want to add another stack of cobblestone, right click, there we go. Now I've got 2 by uh, 64. I believe the basic barrels can hold 64 stacks uh, of a single item, uh, but you can get upgrades of them to a point where they are um, they're holding you know, thousands and thousands uh, upon thousands of items. Um, so what a person might do would be to create a whole bunch of those barrels. Uh, you know, line them up and then, you know, have one for each different type of item you need. So, like, there might be one for dirt, one for iron, one for copper, etc., etc. Um, I'm not a big fan of barrels uh, anymore. There's just way better items, but it's a relatively cheap uh, uh, storage uh, component for, say, some of the things that you accumulate a lot of really early on in game, such as cobblestone and dirt, uh, to, saving, uh, to save you more valuable stuff um, to go into the chest. Now, the next thing you can do is actually upgrade these chests. Um, we have a mod called Iron Chest, which probably anyone who's ever used uh, another mod pack has seen it, uh, but I'm just going to show you. Basically, the way these chests work is uh, they don't have double versions of the chest, so, but there's um, basically all the different metals have their own chest form. So, for example, there is a copper chest, which would be the next lowest upgrade, and it's pretty simple. It's basically just you take a vanilla chest, wrap it around that metal. Um, the higher you go as far as the metal value goes, the uh, the more storage space that can be held. Uh, diamond uh, is the highest level of chest that you can make, and I believe it has 144 slots in it for a single chest. Which, uh, although that's going to be a little expensive for what we want, I don't want to use any diamonds, but I'll just show you what uh, a copper chest looks like in terms of storage space. chest and I need a little bit of copper ore here so while 
while that works, I'm actually just going to start introducing you to the uh, the next component, um, which is going to be another addition to Industrial Craft, which is power storage. Now, as you remember, the generator here that we have is working well, and it's got a little bit of an internal storage here, um, but it's really not that much, and uh, it gets to a point where, obviously, there's just not enough power flowing out of the generator, um, and we have to constantly keep an eye on it, making sure that there's extra fuel. So what we're going to do is set up what's called a bat box, which is short for battery box, um, and it's going to be our first power storage unit. Now the bat box is a relatively simple thing to create. It's basically five wood planks, sort of like so, an insulated tin cable, and a handful of batteries. All of these we've done before. So I'm going to go ahead and start building this. table to create the batteries, which if you remember is redstone, or yeah, redstone in the middle, uh, some tin casings on either side, and a tin cable at the top. So the first thing we need is we need some tin uh, casings and cable. So we make some tin plates. That should actually be enough tin for now. We're going to start uh, making the copper out because we only will need that for our copper chest. Alright, now to make casings, it's just the same way you did with the forge hammer. You just take plates, you put them back in here with the rolling icon selected and it will produce your casings for you. We also need some tin cables, so we're going to switch this to the cutting tool. Put some more tin plates in here, and then we'll make our cables. We're going to need one cable per battery, and since we need three batteries, we will need three cables. So, while that gets done, we'll find what I did with the rubber. Actually, I need a few. 
Should actually have more than enough copper for now, so we're gonna stop that just to conserve power a little. Our poor generator on its own just does not produce enough power for so many sh machines to be operating at once. Well, now that we've got our copper ingots, I will show you the copper chest. So basically it's a vanilla chest, you wrap your copper around it, and there's your copper chest. And now you just put it down anywhere you want, and you'll see that has, I believe it's one extra row compared to a vanilla chest. Let's just pull one out to uh, do a comparison. Got uh, two, four, five by two, four, six, eight, nine. So there's 45 <coughs> slots in here, whereas a normal chest has three by nine, so 27. So we've uh, increased our uh, storage <coughs> space by about 50% uh, just by simply upgrading to copper. Now, uh, one of the other th nice things that you can do is you don't always have to build a new chest. Like, say, if I've got uh, a whole bunch of items already in here, right, let's use the vanilla chest. <coughs> No, we'll go back to this. Um, and I'm just, okay, well I want to upgrade this to the next tier. Say we're going to say iron. Well, I don't want to necessarily have to build an iron chest, put it down, and manually transfer all the items over. So what you can do is make upgrades. So the upgrades are here. Um, there are more than just these, it just depends on the metal type that you're using. So for example, I want a copper to iron chest upgrade. So to do that, I need some glass, I need some iron ingots, and I need a piece of copper in the middle. So now to make glass, I need sand and I need to smelt it. I have no sand, I haven't been uh, farming for it, but I can create sand by putting some cobblestone in the macerator. So we'll let that run, and while that does, we will smelt the iron that we are going to need for all this. <coughs> and we will start uh, putting this out, so just to double check. It's iron on the corners, glass in the middle, and then copper. Now we have enough to make our three batteries. Now I'm not sure if it's still the case, but way back in the day uh, with industrial craft there was a bug where um, the batteries can never be used in order to be properly in order to properly work in the recipes. That may or may not still be the case, but I would highly recommend trying to use fresh batteries, um, you know, just to avoid there being any potential problems. So we take our three batteries, we need some wood planks. And then it's uh, insulated tin cable, which we put there, and there's our bat box. Now the bat box can really go uh, anywhere you want. The way they work, I'm actually this up so you can see it in action, is uh, all but one side of it will receive power. 
So, effectively, any side that doesn't have this little dot on it um, is an input. So you can basically put whatever power sources you want into this. You do have to be careful, though. You'll notice here it says uh, the bat box has an output capacity of 32 EU a tick. I believe its maximum capacity in this new setup is 128 EU. I very well could be wrong with that. Uh, I need to do some testing, so I wouldn't recommend... For now, I would recommend staying at 32. Now, knowing that a generator uh, can do maximum uh, 10 EU a tick, which is what it shows here, we know we can put at least two more generators here, all operating simultaneously, uh, and the bat box will not explode. Uh, there are other generators, like for example there's a geothermal one which uses lava to produce power, and it's actually got a double output, so you really need to pay attention to how much power is output by these generators and make sure you don't overload the bat box. Now you'll see if you right click on the bat box, we actually have some power going into it. And nothing is leaving it right now because I've actually disconnected it so you can see uh, what the output side looked like. But that's effectively it. It'll go up to 40,000 EU and uh, it ho it's a lot more power being held than what's just in the generator. So this gives me a little bit more of a window in terms of powering all my machines for longer when I need them. So we'll put this back down and it will start powering all my machines again. If any of them actually had any tasks to do. And you'll notice right now we're actually consuming more than we're generating, which makes sense because we're only generating 10 EU a tick from the generator. If we added a few more uh, power supply uh, generators, uh, we might actually still be consistently increasing our power level. But this at least lets me uh, get away with running the machines uh, for longer at full strength as opposed to just relying on the generator to keep up. So we have the four glass that we need now to uh, finish our upgrade. There we go. And now to use the upgrade, all you do is you put it in your hand, you go over to the uh, chest you want to upgrade, and you right-click on it. And there we go, we have a silver chest. Open it up, and you'll now notice there's an additional row of, uh, of items. So we have basically another nine slots here than what we had from the copper chest. So that's far more... This is actually a v uh, the size of a this is a double vanilla chest worth of inventory right here. Yep. So, so um, once you go above iron, you're actually having more space than a double chest, and at least here, it only takes up one block as opposed to two, which makes life a little bit simpler. So now the next item that we are going to go on is some electric tools. You'll remember in the last episode I spoke about the tree taps and how you use them to remove the sticky resins from the rubber trees. Well, the tree taps actually die off pretty quickly, so what we're going to do is get ourselves an electric one, which will allow us to basically use the same tool over and over, and all we have to do is recharge it with some power uh, to keep it maintained. So the first thing we have to do is look up the recipe. It doesn't matter which one uh, that you select, they both operate the same. You need basically a tree tap and then a small power unit. And the small power unit is the complicated part. It requires some item casings, some uninsulated copper cable, an electronic circuit, a battery, and an electric motor. And the electric motor consists of a heck of a lot more things. So we actually have a little bit of work ahead of us in order to make this happen. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to build the uh, electric circuit and the battery, because those are both recipes that we're very familiar with here at this point. lots of copper. So the electric or the battery if you remember is the two casings, some redstone in the middle, and an insulated tin cable. So there's our battery. So we've got the first component done. And that goes here if memory serves correctly. 
Yep, and now we need an electronic circuit, which is a six copper cable, some redstone, and an iron plate. So now we have our electronic circuit, which is component two of the uh, of the uh, power unit, the small power unit. Uh, next, we need some iron casings and some uninsulated copper cable. the electric motor. This is going to be more complicated. It requires some more tin casings, an iron ingot, and the coils. The coils, if you remember, also require an iron ingot, an uninsulated cable all around. So first we will start off uh, making the tin casings, and we're also going to start uh, creating some more copper cable, which is what we've already started here. We're going to need a fairly large amount of it in order to get it. I think 24 cable altogether. actually holding up quite well right now. So I think it was a good investment. Everything's working a lot faster right now. Oh, there it is. Since we have an excess of power, I'll uh, make more rubber with the sticky resin I've gotten in the past. This should actually make for us, I believe, 30 cable, because I believe it's 3 cable to a plate, yep. Um, which is more than what we're going to need for this, but we will definitely use the cable later on, so it's really not a big deal if we're cutting it up now. We've got plenty of copper. We've got more being crushed here. started on our first coil. Just goes around like that. And we need some iron ingots.
Fire's Coil number one. I need two more of them. Now you'll remember we need, uh, well, I guess we only need two coils. Uh, again, my math is failing me. All right, so, well, we will need that coil for our other electronic item that we plan on making, so that's not too big of a deal. We need some tin casings and the iron ingots. our electric motor which is the final piece for our small power unit so now we also need a tree tap and we take the tree tap we take the small power unit and there's our electric tree, tree tap so now to charge this thing you basically put it into any kind of power source that we have so we could throw it in the generator here or we could throw it in the bat box charged and now when I go to the, uh, the trees I still get my resin uh, but the durability bar is now actually just based on energy you can see I've used 100 EU now uh, getting that resin that I've gotten so far um, as long as that number is above 50 uh, it'll keep uh, keep at work and uh, all I need to do is just charge it back up. I do not need to craft this ever again unless I happen to lose this. So this becomes exceptionally helpful with keeping up with your uh, resin demands and not having to carry a boatload of regular tree taps all over the place. Now the next item we are going to make, and will be the last item for this uh, this episode, is another electronic tool which I've mentioned before, which is the electric wrench. The uh, wrenches, if you remember, are what's required in order to manipulate the machines once you've placed them down. Uh, primarily, you can use them for removing the machines without actually losing the uh, machine itself. Um, it also can be used to reorient the uh, storage devices as well as uh, some power adjusting transformers. Uh, so say for example if I put this down and I accidentally put the input facing this way I could use the wrench to flip it around so I don't lose the power that's stored in there or have to break anything or anything of that nature. It just makes life a little bit easier. Uh, the electric wrench also has the benefit is that it has two modes. The uh, the first mode is uh, is just your standard wrenching, removing uh, machines, but also like the normal wrench carries a chance of you losing your machine in the process. It also has what's called a lossless mode, which uses a heck of a lot more energy, but guarantees you will not lose your machine. So if you happen to be removing something that's incredibly expensive and you just don't want to have to rebuild you can use a lossless mode and you're guaranteed to keep that machine you just have you typically a, a full charge will only do one lossless mode removal uh... once you've done that you'll pretty much have to charge your wrench again so first we've got to make the basic wrench the basic wrench is just a uh, six brawn ingot shaped in a y and so we need some more bronze and bronze if you remember is basically made from uh, crushed tin, or from any kind of crushed tin or tin dust, and copper. I'm 
actually going to make some extra bronze here because we are actually going to need it for the start of the next episode. So that just saves me before I have to create more later on. And while we wait for that, we can start uh, hammering out our copper plates because we're going to need all those coils again, as well as some additional tin casings. we're going to have to create another one of those uh, small power units like what we did with the electronic tree tab. Alright, so the electronic are the, uh, the small power unit, if you remember, uh, requires a battery and electronic circuit. Those will be the first things that we build here. Uh, the electronic circuit requires uh, six insulated copper wire, as I've mentioned before, so we're just going to make that first. Our two redstone, and it's an iron plate. There we go, there's step one. And then the next thing we need is a battery which is uh, the two redstone, a tin cable, and some tin casings on either side of here, which I am in the process of getting made. But I lie. So you notice we're low on power here. This is because the generator is actually running out of power, and I have been paying attention to it. Uh, so what we're going to do to fix this you notice we've got no power right now, period, for anything, so I'm actually going to use one of my coal just to kind of get the ball rolling again. And then we'll start having charcoal getting produced out of all this. And then we'll be good. Stop this. We don't need more copper being macerated at this time. And we need this power being better used for uh, producing our tin casings.
grab our bronze, so we'll just go ahead and make our wrench now. There we go. And if I was to use the wrench as is to remove a machine, I could simply just hold it in my hand, and I believe it's a shift right click to actually remove the machine. Not, not just a standard right click. It's been a long time since I've used a uh, thing, but you'll notice I actually managed to keep my extractor and all the items that were in it obviously popped out, which is perfectly fine. All right, so we will uh, just put a wrench in here for safekeeping for now. Oil, which we then use to finish off our motor, which we then use to finish off our small power unit, which we then use to create absolutely nothing, it seems. You know what it is? It's because I used the wrench. Remember how I was saying that sometimes uh, used items uh, won't work? Well, there's a prime example of it not working. So, I need to actually smell one more bronze I got. It's the electric rinse. That's a shift right click. No, it's still a thingy. Uh, Alright, well, in any case, uh, to power it, all you do is open up, obviously, the bat box and power it the same way. Now, because just a standard right click will remove a machine, you need to be extra careful. Uh, like if I was right click on the generator to open it up, with this, I would actually just remove the generator, which I don't want to do. So I, it's always best to use something, um, something else, obviously, to open up the inventory and then put the wrench in. Now I did also mention uh, lossless mode. Uh, to change the modes in any uh, industrial craft item that has them, you hold the M key down on your keyboard, and then you right click just somewhere on the ground. The other hand, and now you'll see it says lossless wrench mode enabled. Now, if I go and use that, you'll notice that the durability meter on my electronic wrench has just dropped into the red. That is because it took 10,000 EU to do that one uh, removal. But I was guaranteed to get my extractor back. I didn't have to worry about having to create a new extractor. So, you know, it's it's a trade-off if you have the power to use it. Alright, so that concludes the, this episode. Uh, the next one that we do is going to start talking about how to expand your ore processing units, and uh, we're going to start moving into some other mods. Thanks very much.